We are continuing to follow the breaking news in the Mosquito Fire. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alex Bell. This is To The Point. And that fire has jumped the American River and is now burning in the town of Forest Here, Hill. Here's a live look at the evacuation map. The areas in red are under mandatory evacuations. Those in the yellow area are under evacuation warnings. You can see the evacuation orders and warnings have been extended all the way to the Auburn area. And if the situation gets worse near you, just trust your gut and do not wait to be told to evacuate. Just go ahead and do so. We want to get straight to Luke Cleary, who is off of Forest Hill Road right near Forest Hills High School. Good evening, Luke. Hi, Alex. Just want to let you know we've moved locations since uh, we came to you live in the six o'clock show. We are now on Mosquito Ridge Road, and from here you can get a vantage of just how close the flames have gotten to structures in the Mosquito Fire today. Look at this Cal Fire uh, firefighter who's uh, making his way through here, kind of mopping up, but the ground, as you can see, is totally singed. And if you look just up here, there's a structure where the fire came up to within just 10 or 15 feet, right up to that fence line. Actually, if we look over here, there's another uh, RV that looks like it may have sustained a bit of damage. This is close to where our Kurt Rivera came to you live also in the six o'clock show. And then I'll just bring you over to the other side of this road and you can get a sense of just how steep and rugged this terrain is. Look at that, that's like a you know, 45, near 45 degree angle looking down there. And as you can see, the vegetation has all burned away. The, the trunks of these trees are completely blackened by the fire as the smoke continues to roll up this hill. Again, firefighters are putting some you know, pretty extreme efforts to protect the homes and structures of Forest Hill, like this mobile park, and uh, the fight is far from over as the winds continue to pick up here in Forest Hill. Alex? All right, Luke, thank you so much. Please stay safe out there. Let's go ahead and get over to Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods for the latest conditions. Monica, what do we know so far? Well, the winds, as Luke mentioned, have been very erratic forward today. And unfortunately, wind adds to fueling those fires. Here's a look at our visible satellite image. You can see the smoke plumes very easily right around Forest Hill and around that mosquito fire. Now, as we take a look at some of the visual images from up above from our alert wildfire camera, you can see the towering pyrocumulus, but also some lenticular clouds. Just, that just shows how much turbulence is in the air and is been a very difficult firefight at times not even able to fight this fire from the air as far as the perimeter lines they have continued to grow over the last couple of days the orange and the red shadowing there showing the growth of this fire now today we had those southwest winds pushing that fire closer to forest hill also on the east side of this fire that should not uh, go unnoticed because we are going to continue to watch how that growth happens as well the latest uh, perimeter showing about 49,000 acres burned so far. There's the hot spots there around Forest Hill. There's the east side of this fire, obviously growing in that direction as well, supported by the winds. Tonight, we'll see those winds starting to come downhill, and so that smoke will settle into the lowest elevations, but then once again for tomorrow, start out of the southwest, pushing that smoke along I-80 and towards the Tahoe Basin. Now, speaking of that, we have the road closures along I-80 westbound. We're down to one lane along I-80 eastbound near uh, uh, Gold Run to Alta and near State Road 20, right at that junction there, it's closed. What's going to add to the elements of this firefight? This low pressure system brewing in the Pacific. We've got a chance of rain and more crazy winds ahead in the forecast, Alex. All right, Monica, thank you. We all know that conditions are changing literally hour by hour. So we have a team of journalists on the ground in Forest Hill this evening covering the Mosquito Fire as it moves into Forest Hill. We want to get to Kurt Rivera, who is live now along Mosquito Ridge Road at the Mountain Shadows Retreat. Uh, Kurt, you've been there for a couple of hours. What are you seeing now? Well, as Monica mentioned, uh, the winds have been very, very erratic. And as she said, that is what has fueled this fire along Mosquito Ridge Road. Luke is just down. I can't see him, but he's just down the road from us here. Just so smoky. But within the last hour or so, I'm going to step away here. The fire actually jumped from one side to the other. And on the other side there is where most of the firefighters have been positioned for structure protection. And they've done an amazing job protecting the homes. As you can see, some of the burned out areas where the fire actually jumped 
and some of the trees that burned, and you can see some of the fire retardant that was dropped uh, earlier before we were here. Not enough to stop the fire from jumping, but crews have done a, 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 an incredible job. I'm going to have Wes turn around here, my photographer, and show where that water truck is moving in. That home right there, the fire actually jumped onto the property after some backfiring operations. In fact, I see a tree still kind of flared up there. Firefighters were already waiting for it. Winds kicked up and the spot fires hit a couple trees and they knocked them down right away. So firefighters are doing an amazing job again here on Mosquito Ridge Road. This is where the front lines of the fire is right now or are right now. Firefighters at the ready making sure no homes are destroyed here. We're live in Forest Hill. Back to you, Alex. All right, Kurt, thank you so much. I want to go ahead and bring in Van Two. You've mm -hmm. been following this fire very closely all day. When did you first hear that Forest Hills, I mean, was really in trouble here? You know, the alarm bell started ringing at around 2.30 uh, this afternoon. And ever since then, as you can see from our reporters on the ground, it has been all hands on deck from the fire crews. Uh, they spent the past few days when the weather was mild uh, with that smoke to really um, dig in those dozer lines. But really, they came in full force tonight to really reinforce um, the, the protection really of Forest Hill. So around 2.30 that was happening. That spot fire jumped the American River. The first initial reading of it was about 95 acres and within an hour, 300 and again, still growing at this hour. But I think the biggest question a lot of people have is why did this fire grow in this area and so quickly at that? Of course, look at the terrain. There's a very, as uh, um, Kurt showed, Kurt and um, Luke showed, it's very steep there. So the fire can really move up quickly up Canyon. And also, of course, the winds are the big factor here but anything um, that people should take home tonight when it comes to this is are these evacuation orders it's a very dangerous situation and they're changing they're, all the time yes and yeah. there are people who uh, who hold out understandably so but fire officials say this is too dangerous now is the last chance to really get out and is there anything else that fire officials have been telling you that they've been doing to try to help this fire right now uh, of course I mean, there's retardant there's dozer lines there's hand crews they're throwing everything they have all right, Van, thank you so much. We appreciate it. As Van just mentioned, packing up your belongings and evacuating at the drop of a hat can be a very tough decision, but it is one that can save your life. Investigative reporter Brandon Riddiman has been covering wildfires throughout his entire career, and he was caught in the campfire back in 2018 and shares some life-saving tips that he's learned along the way. Just get them to one side. We can squeeze through that. We can squeeze through this one. It's okay. Let's go. Let's go. This is how I escaped paradise, improvising because power lines fell down and blocked our road. Holy Oh, Mr. Ritterman. We're alive. Some scratches, but we're good. Uh, window up, window up, window up, embers. I'm showing you this because it gives an idea of what could come to your street if you wait too long to leave. We've seen too many people die. I've investigated a lot of those deaths. And beyond the basics, like leaving when you're told and making a plan to grab your most important stuff, I have a few thoughts to add. First, don't wait to be told. These can give us a false sense of security. We've seen failures to send out evacuation alerts. Fires also tend to burn the phone network. There is just no substitute for looking out your window and deciding how a fire looks to you. Thick smoke coming your way, a wall of flames, or falling embers are all signs to get out. Second, know your escape routes and safety zones. This means planning the best ways out of your neighborhood in more than one direction. Even if you can't finish that escape, you can still survive. On those roads, look for big spaces, soccer fields, golf courses. People survived using big parking lots as safety zones in paradise. And while we're on this, park like a firefighter with the nose of your car facing out so you don't have to waste time turning around. Lastly, stick together. If it's time for one person in your house to leave, I recommend you all leave together. Save your lives, worry about everything else later. Exactly, and we will have more about these wildfires coming up at the end of the show. But right after the break, California launched a website today for people looking for information about abortions and reproductive care, what it means for pregnant residents and those who are out of state. We'll have more after the break. California launched a website today to act as a hub for information about abortions and reproductive care. Abortion.ca.gov gives people access to information about legal rights, finding a provider, and other forms of support, whether or not they live in the state of California. 
Governor Newsom's office said in a release that the website provides information specifically for those coming to California for an abortion and claims that it does not collect any personal information from visitors. State Assembly member and chair of the California Legislative Women's Caucus, Christina Garcia, told me that the website can help bridge the gap for people who are lacking resources. The reality is that you have pockets across California where equity has been an issue and communities of color particularly have been left behind, rural communities. And so this guarantees that they're not going to be going to random websites where they're not sure if the information is accurate or not. Now, on the other side, organizations like Right to Life of Central California say that using taxpayer money to fund the creation of a sanctuary state is more extreme than what most Californians want. Executive Director John Girardi also believes that the state's actions don't address problems that might lead to someone seeking an abortion. To think that what so many of these women, quote, need is abortion, when really what we see a dire need for in the San Joaquin Valley especially is for access to quality prenatal care for lower income people. Um, fewer and fewer doctor's offices want to take Medi-Cal patients for prenatal care because it doesn't reimburse very well. And uh, to see the state government go bend over backwards for the provision of this one service while so much else with the public provision of health care uh, is so lacking, particularly in the area of prenatal care, 12 states have outlawed nearly all abortions and two have capped eligibility at six weeks into a pregnancy since Roe v. Wade was overturned. And after the break, we are headed to South Sacramento's Franklin Boulevard, why hundreds of lowriders will soon be on display. South Sacramento's Franklin Boulevard was the place to be for cruising back in the 1970s and 80s, and many people still cruise the boulevard to this day. But about 600 cars are expected to line the streets around South Sacramento this Sunday for the Back to the Boulevard Festival celebrating Mexican Independence Day. Photojournalist Xavier Urarte and I met up with some car clubs who say that cruising is more than a culture. It's an experience, it's family time, and many of these cars are family heirlooms. I'm from Oak Park, born and raised, and I hung around on Franklin Boulevard my whole life. All the people are really good people, and it's uh, people that I grew up with. It's all family and friends, close friends. Everybody just has the same goals and aspirations, and, and they're into the same stuff. Just good people and, and want to do good for their families and for the community. I used to ride my old Schwinn bicycle up and down the street around here and looking at the cars and I'd beg my mom when I was a little kid to drive me out here to, so I could look at the cars cruising around and uh, it was just packed back in the day. I was like, man, one day I would love to have one of those cars. Fast forward now to me being an adult, I'm lucky enough to have a car like this and the style that I put into it was to have a car that looked like it was cruising down Franklin back in those days. It was like the vision that I had from when I was a kid. So this was my first car that I ever owned. It's a 1968 Chevy Impala. Um, I bought it in high school when I was at McClatchy. Paid 500 bucks for it. It didn't look like this. I, I put a lot of money and a lot of work into it. My main thing was just to uh, build a clean car. The car culture in this neighborhood is, it's, it's a big deal. It's like we have family members and older friends that all had cars and growing up around Franklin Boulevard is, uh, that was a big part of, of being around here was just that it was cruising on the weekends and everybody was hanging out. I took it upon myself to get all my buddies together and start uh, the car club. The people in our club work for the state and local government. Uh, we have contractors, we even have a dentist in our car club, but there's people that work for corrections and Department of Justice, uh, California Highway Patrol. We just all happen to be into lowriders and into nice cars and we grew up around here. People that just go to work and uh, take care of their families and they want to enjoy this stuff on the weekend. My dad started out doing it, you know, that's how I grew up doing it. 
and this was his car. Well, he passed on um, in 2001. I started working on it in 2010 when I got out the Navy. And now I'm taking care of it for him. You know, may he rest in peace, but it's just something that I've been, you know, keeping going for him and uh, enjoy doing. My dad used to have a shop right here on Franklin um, called Bethel's Body Shop. And I mean, he, he used to paint all kinds of cars. So, you know, I would see him working in the booth ever since I was a kid, I remember, you know. I remember when he had this car and he was working on it, I was just small. We had all kinds of different ones, but you know, this was his favorite one. What made me get into car clubs was my uncles back in the day, they had cars and, and I used to love seeing their cars growing up and it inspired me to build mine as I grew up. Lowriders meant a lot to me because me, myself, I'm a car builder as, as well as a car owner. So I build my own cars. So it really makes me feel really good to see my work out here, everybody admiring my work. That's what really, it makes me, lifts me up. I've been building cars for over 40 years. I'm out here with my, with all my friends, their family, their kids. We bring our kids to these events, you know, and they're growing up as it's this culture as well. Back in the day, Friday night, Saturday night, Franklin Boulevard, Sunday, William Lamb Park, Tahoe Park, those are the good old days to me. I love it, I miss them. I miss those days and I hope we can get them back. Cars are like the tool that brings us all together. I'm just totally happy to be a part of it, be from this neighborhood and to help change that perception of what people believe, you know, low riders or people that are into cruising, you know, is. It's, it's a, a lot different than what some people who are not involved in this scene, uh, it's a lot different than what they think. A misunderstanding of the car club is they portray us as gang members. We're not gang members, we're car club. Kind of like a legacy thing, you know? It's a family heirloom, something that I want to keep in the family. I mean, I'll never sell it. I had to sacrifice a lot of his old projects, you know, in order to get this one to where it is now. A lot of these cars are family heirlooms. They've been passed down from generations to generations. You want to uh, cherish it and, and really take care of it because we're passing it on. You know, my kids, they love the cars. We are heavily involved in the community and uh, we're good people, you know, with a good heart. The Back to the Boulevard event is this Sunday. There will be cars, food, live music, and of course, a historic lowrider exhibit. We have everything that you need to know at abc10.com slash to the point. But let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast here. Temperatures still warm, thankfully not seeing triple digits today though. Uh, Sacramento seeing 73, Stockton 75, Marysville 80, Tahoe at 64. A huge difference from last week. And a quick check of our 10-day forecast here. Uh, you can see Wednesday 79, Thursday at 80. So it's not looking too bad. Much cooler temperatures and coming up right after the break, we're going to have some updates on the mosquito fire. So make sure you stay right here. We are still tracking the mosquito fire burning in El Dorado and Placer counties. It's already burned at least 25 homes. The fire picked up after jumping the American River this afternoon and is now threatening Forest Hill. This is new video out of the area and our team of journalists are on the ground seeing damage along Mosquito Road. And I do want to note that there is a virtual meeting that will start in just a few minutes at 7. This is coming from the Placer County Sheriff's Office. Um, they have a meeting at 7. Unified commanders will discuss the firefighting efforts and progress on the Mosquito Fire as well as evacuation. So that will be happening at 7 p.m. We'll have details on abc10.com. Here's a live look at the evacuation map. The areas in red are under mandatory evacuations. Those in the yellow areas are under evacuation warnings. You can see evacuation orders and warnings have been extended all the way to the Auburn area. And if the situation gets worse near you, just trust your gut and do not wait to be told to evacuate. Just go ahead and do so. We are also following an earthquake. This just happened out in Santa Rosa, an estimated magnitude 4.4. We will have the latest on that coming up tonight at 11. If you need more details, make sure you reach out to our team. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure that you stay safe and take care of everyone. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com, or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.